When I first called out to God to say, Lord, send me, I will go. I, I am convinced that he heard that first prayer. He's taken me on such a journey that I couldn't, if I tried, recreate the same path. Привіт, мене звати Денис. Я народився в Америці. Зараз я месенер в Україні. І тут служу в місті Тернополі. То ласкаво просимо в нашому дому. So I've had a heart for missions for a while. I have really was impacted a few years ago when I watched some documentaries of the underground, underground church movement in China. I saw videos of, of young Christians gathering together in really difficult situations and just hungry to, to meet the Lord. And that really sparked a fire in me. I saw there's a hunger in the nation. There's a hunger uh, for the word of the Lord. And, and I, was, I was looking for God to use me. And I thought, well, that's, a, that's where I want to be. I want to I go where people are hungry. I want to go where there's an opportunity to share Jesus. So I started to, to do more. Mission trips out of the country. I went to a few in different Latin American countries, but then one day I actually moved to China. I was a missionary there for two and a half years. It was an incredible experience. So we were sitting in a dormitory with some students that were coming to our uh, gatherings that we were having for uh, any person that wanted to just get connected. And we started watching some videos on YouTube about uh, healing that was happening in the name of Jesus. And as we're watching through some of these clips, having some conversations, I see a commercial for the scent come up. And I really didn't know what it was, but when I saw it, I realized this is, this is what I was made for. And these words just came out of my mouth. I was kind of shocked. I said, I'm going to go there. And uh, I really didn't have the finances for that. I, I was a missionary, uh, just kind of new in, in, in some ways. And so uh, for that event, I really had to know it was the Lord. So I just began to pray and I'm fasting and asking God, is this from you? And he gave me a really big confirmation that this is, this is his calling. So I bought the ticket, went literally to the other side of the world and uh, found myself at this one day event. I'm standing there and I'm, I'm praying the whole time, asking the Lord for a missions movement. It's the last hour and worship had just finished. I look on the stage and I see a man come out that uh, has a strong gifting in the prophetic. And I'm thinking, I really want God to speak to me. And so I start to like look around wondering, what should I do? Is there, is there a way that I can go down there? Maybe he'll minister to me. And then I stop and I was thinking, hold on, Dennis, chill out, relax. Uh, God can speak to you through anybody. Literally 15 seconds later, I, after I prayed that, I hear off the mic, I was so shocked, I was afraid. I was like, is this, is this for real? He starts saying, there's a man here, your name is Dennis. There's a Dennis who your parents were from the Ukraine. You moved into America, help me out here. Is there a Dennis? We have somebody. We have, thank God. The cameras all turned towards me and he begins to prophesy over my life, over my family. Dennis, the Lord, the Lord himself, has been walking with you since you were a little boy. And he said a lot, but he began to focus over Ukraine and Eastern Europe. Your heritage in Eastern Europe, God is gonna send you not only to America, but he's gonna commission you over the Ukraine and Eastern Europe. And something's gonna happen like you can't even dream of. After getting that word, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, is this a now word or later word? How do I respond? So I go on this 40 day fast and asking the Lord, is this a now word or later or what do I do with this? Is this from you, God? You know, is this from you? Is this you, Lord? <laughs> all right, and then all of a sudden, uh, during that fast, I feel this confirmation. This is it. This is, this is really something that I need to do. So I, in about four months, moved to Kiev and Immediately doors start to open up. We start taking teams in. We start mobilizing people to go to different churches and we're uh, leading uh, teams on outreach, seeing God healing the sick. We saw deaf ears open up. People who had pain in their bodies get completely healed, uh, seeing legs grow out, all these incredible, incredible things. And we were starting to see these, these sparks of a, of a greater movement that, that the Lord himself was doing. God was always faithful to show himself. And these are the, the, those, those quakings that we saw, that God is really up to something big. And then all of a sudden, unexpectedly, the war broke out. 
Major news. Breaking news. Ukraine is now a nation at war. Troops and tanks have entered Ukraine on all fronts. Ukraine has declared a state of emergency. Russian forces there began their attack. of explosions and attacks at several major Ukrainian cities. When the war started, things really changed for us. It was, it went from doing church events and large gatherings to answering needs that were just, just as a result of the crisis. One of the first things that sparked in my heart when, uh, when I heard about the bombs coming down was to get people out of these hotspots. In Kiev and in other cities, a lot of people don't have uh, their own cars, and so they rely on public transport. Knowing that situation and also hearing about how bad the roads were blocked, we started immediately mobilizing uh, evacuation efforts. Little by little, different churches started to uh, coordinate with us, and we had a convoy going out at that point of 15 vehicles. Uh, by the end of those early weeks, we had uh, evacuated over 2,000 people. A portion of this was also disabled people and special needs that were not being able to get evacuated because they were in apartments and not able to come to pickup spots. So we were able to take uh, phone calls. We had a hotline that was set up and we were going into these cities, make, uh, making uh, room in our vans by uh, drilling out the seats, putting mattresses on the ground and have people just laying on the floor because they're, they're, they were disabled to a point where they couldn't sit. This is something that I think has really given people this awakening. Uh, when people are facing death and terror, they start to really think deeper about life. And another area that uh, we started to minister in was with the YWAM base here. There's been an incredible cooperation with churches, things that, on a level that I've never seen before in my life. Churches, regardless of denomination or affiliation, started to partner together to give resources, food packets, or whatever else was needed to people that, that were coming in from the East fleeing the war. And before most of the government uh, rescue efforts could be put into place, already churches were networking with one another to provide rescue efforts, missions, evacuations, food, and so on. And a large thrust of those early days of the war, that, that effort was done and organized by, by churches. And we've seen people open up their hearts to Jesus. I stood in crowds in cities that are on the front line of attack, and there's dozens and dozens of people just gathered together, ready to load into the vans to be taken out west or some of them into Europe. And one of the pastors stand, is standing there and he's giving them a last word and, and preaching the gospel. And almost every single person raises their hand saying that they want Jesus. I've always wanted to see something big happen. Sometimes being put into positions where I, you know, brought it into a different country, a different culture, you kind of get shocked with certain things and you don't know, how do I deal with this? How do I work through this? This is maybe not how I saw it playing out. But there that whole time, even if I didn't know exactly what I'm always doing, I always knew I'm, I'm at the right place because I, I said yes to God. My legacy, is not just seeing great results on this side of heaven, but the great yes to the call of God. That even in the small things to be faithful, knowing that for Him, it is big. And I, I remember when I was at the Send and I got that call from the Lord, that prophetic word that just launched me out from one nation to another. It was, there was a lot of excitement that came there. There was a lot of eagerness and uh, God started opening incredible doors. But when, when war started, everything changed. And it was difficult, and it was it, it was so much challenges, and there was there's times when you're wondering, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Maybe I should go home, or how how do I respond in such a time? But in the middle of all of it, I saw God showing that He's faithful, that He's the one who called, and He's the one who's going to lead me to that calling. But overall, what keeps me going is understanding that He's worthy of everything in my life. If there's anything that I could offer Him, if there's anything that I could do, it's to lay my life at His feet and say, God, take me, use me, spend me, whatever it may look like. And what we've seen is that in great tragedy, in great pain, He shows Himself to be strong and the comforter and light always overcomes the darkness. And I just want to encourage you to follow hard after God, to go no matter what anyone around you says, to say, Lord, I believe what your word says. I am not going to back down because it's not easy. I want you to receive all the glory from my life. And I promise you that if you do that, His promises will come true in your life. 
we see now that it's not based on our conceptions of what God says. It's based on obedience to the Lord and He shows Himself strong. And that's what we've been seeing. We've been seeing the Lord do so much more than we ever thought. And I think we are really in the wakings of a great move of the Lord. If any person feels like, man, I thought it was going to look one way, but it's looking like another, you're in the right place at the right time because God's Word never goes back void. It never comes back void. It always brings you to where He said it's going to go. And if God said that the gospel is going to be preached to all the nations, oh, it's better, you better believe it's going to be preached. And it, you better jump on and hold on because the, the train of God is moving. And He wants to fill you with His power. He wants to move through your life. And it doesn't have to always look pretty and it doesn't have to match up to your expectations. All He needs is your yes.